I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I am out in the barrio of Monte Ored, south of Sutiava. I don't know if it's really a barrio. It might be a comunidad or something like that, a colonia. It's, it's hard to say, but Monte Ored, uh, which is not on the maps. So I'm going to have to bring up a map to show you, but we're going to take you on a barrio tour. I've not gone over to like the entrance yet. I'm standing right in front of it and uh, we're going to explore this together. But one of our viewers was, has done some, some stuff here and is interested in seeing more and having some uh, view into it. And so we're out here south of Sutiava doing this exploration in the southern part of Leon today in a really interesting area. So I'm going to show you where we are, bring up a map, do all kinds of stuff and do a full barrio exploration with you guys right after the bump. All right, Monte Ored is in a very rural area south of Leon, south in the west, south of Sutiava. So when we come out here, we're really out here. Now we're on a beautiful country lane, and in a minute I'm going to flip the camera around. But before we do that, I'm going to bring up a map and show you where we are so you can kind of get a bearing because this is a, a very difficult area to describe. Uh, we're south just barely east, southeast of the airport in Sutiava, which is the Leon airport. And uh, uh, we're really far south and in an area that is not labeled. So I've got to show you on the map. The roads are, are on there, but they're, everything's without a label down here. So we're gonna show you where we are. Now the walk down, the country lane, it's a beautiful country lane. I actually think it's it's got a lot of potential for expats who are looking for something very rustic and, and low cost and quiet while still having decent access to the city and in like a nice area. Uh, and there's a really nice pulperia on this road. So like, even if you just need to get snacks or something, like there's a good option for that. But this area is really beautiful, but it's really dusty today. And even the walk to get down here, uh, part of it, you the, the, there's no sidewalk, so you actually end up going into kind of a, a wooded path that kind of doubles as a sidewalk. It's really beautiful and interesting, uh, but not what you would expect at all. So um, without too much further ado, I'm actually going to flip the camera around. I'm, I don't have the lavalier. It still doesn't work. Um, I'm going to flip the camera around and, and get the audio the other direction. And let's just go for a walk. I'm going to start from this intersection that I show you on the map, show you where we are, and then I'm going to head right into the barrio and we're going to explore this together. It's a really small barrio, so we're going to attempt to walk the entire thing and map it out. It's only like three streets. So here we are facing north. This is the road we come down from Sutiava and basically is the only reasonable access to this area. And you can see we got a lot of this is just farmland and uh, we recently had crops uh, harvested, so everything's very short. And then the road continues, and it's not actually a dirt road, but it's very dusty in that direction. But if we turn east the way we're gonna go, this is actually a dirt road with a lot of trash. This one, this one is pretty clean. This one is not so much, and it's very windy today. And if it looks hot on the camera, it is. Uh, we're not at 99 today, but we are expected to hit 99 tomorrow. Today is just warm, but it's, uh, it's a pretty hot day to be going for a long walk through the barrios and nothing like kicking off with a big, big pile of trash here. That's, that's unfortunate. Not a great sign. This road up here does something interesting. Ooh, well, I have no idea what we were going to expect. So over here on the right, what do we have? I can't tell if there's water down there or not. There's definitely horses down there. That is a really low area. Look at that drop off. But there's a building just below me. I'm gonna put the camera up a little bit so you guys can see it. You'll get a better view than I have. There's people out there too. I'm wondering if these are salt flats. The road that I'm walking on is essentially silt. This is an extremely fine dust. There's a little farm path going up there. This is an extremely remote area, no doubt. While we're walking, one of the advantages of having the camera this way is I can... Oh! Those are not cell flats. That is the Sutiava water treatment facility over on the right. Can show. You can see it a little bit how it drops down there. So this is where the wastewater from Sutiava comes. That 
That is a very out there little home. Driving a motorcycle down this road has got to be just awful. The dirt is so fine, it's like being on ice. Cute little tree-lined path here. Well, it could be cute. It's kind of brambly now. You can tell when that was originally planted, that must have been really adorable. So much trash on this road. Oh, this is awful. There's oddly a lot of what looks like paver debris everywhere, but there's clearly never been pavers on this road. You probably can't hear it on the video, but there's a lot of music coming in from all directions. It's definitely people at home listening to loud music. Oh, here we can see pipes coming in. A lot of things that were once here that used to be a working fence. Very interesting compound there. It's almost like they're using the trash to fill in the road. Now there's a bunch of pavers over there. Okay, so straight in front of us, you can still see the water treatment plant out there. And I assume anything here is part of it. Here they have real pavers, the big ones. And, uh, oh, there we go. We can actually walk down to the water treatment plant. No reason not to do that. Before we actually do that, let's show where we just came from down there. And while this is a very silted up dirt road, that's a manhole cover and you can hear the water flowing right there. Let's head forward or south just a little bit. Oh, this says something. Probably says we're not allowed to come in here. Nope, definitely. Oh, toxic gases, be careful. Okay, I think we're okay. The horses down there are hanging out. It's funny that they say warning toxic gases and then have a sidewalk. It's the only spot with a sidewalk. Everything else is just a dirt road. They're putting in these big pavers. That's really nice. There's a meeting point in case of disaster. What? There's a lot of things that don't make sense here. There's evacuation signs all over. Who would be evacuating here? This makes, this makes no sense. What the heck is... What the heck is here? So this is a lot of horses just hanging out down there. And this is the water treatment facility. And the sidewalk continues forward. Like clearly this is meant to be something. Something beyond a water treatment facility. But who would want to do something near a water treatment facility other than treat water? Very odd. And all these buildings are like long gone. This is a sluice. Who knows where the water used to come from for this. Maybe it still does. Look at that. Oh, it's got water in it. That's still in use. You can see it pretty well. Well, you guys should be excited. It's not every day that you get to uh, see the Southern Leon water treatment facility. Some people ask me, like, are there water treatment facilities in the city? And 
and stuff. Yeah, there, there absolutely is all over. The, there's different ones. This just happens to be the first one that I've walked directly past on the channel. Looks like there used to be a sidewalk on that side too. But, but to where? I don't understand any of this. Very, very strange. But there we are. And it doesn't smell bad up here, but down where I just walked to, it did. Did, did smell bad, as you would expect. <laughs> All right, there's the little path that we came down and there's a little road there that is the barrio that we're going to be exploring but there's another road going into it and i'm going to walk up to that as our starting point and then my plan is to end on that one right there this is so this is monte orid that we're in and oh and there's the road right there so really tiny but only two roads head into this barrio. It is so hot. I am cooking out here. Got some people hanging out up there waving to us. Okay. We may have some audio problems here because they got loud music, so we'll have to get past that. So here's the road heading east, field on the side of town, and we're heading into the barrio. We should be far enough away from the noise now. There's a house playing really loud music. And then the church had people in it, but they were just tuning a guitar really loudly. We could have that on here. That's not copyrighted, but there was someone's playing the radio pretty loudly as well. Here they sell ice and, and uh, chai, chocolate drinks, little bags. This is kind of muddy. It's not expecting mud. Little pulperia here. Very little. You can tell it's hot. All the dogs are trying to find shade. Oh, what a cutie. What a cutie. All right. Step into the shade here for a second. The camera will appreciate it. This is a very nice styled house right here. Can hear people doing some kind of construction over here and on the right what looks like probably a little farm of some sort it's odd the way that they have it fenced off and then a wall and then a fence and some things over there it's hard to tell what that is another nice house here loud music pause as we come up to the corner here so I can bring up a map for y'all that way you can see where we've walked to get your bearings before we head deeper in that should make this pretty easy you can tell they <laughs> dog underneath the food but they have a little frittanga there on the street there's their sign that's where they're cooking right there and uh, we're in some shade here quick real quickly this is a tiny little house with some plantains growing they do. And we're at the corner. This is kind of the northeast corner of, of Monte Ored. And we're about halfway through the barrio. So this is really incredibly small as, uh, as neighborhoods go. But we're going to head forward here. 
Adios! It's early that I'm recording this, so the Fratanga is just setting up. It's kind of still breakfast time, but they're getting ready for lunch. So it's real common in small communities. They'll come out with big plastic bins full of food that's been fried up, cooked on an open flame in, in oil. So it's, a, it's an open air fry. Here's another little place selling a few things, economic things, different sizes. Hola. Okay, and now we've crossed over to the other road. Now this is interesting that there's an intersection here, <laughs> which is very funny. So to the left here, looking south, is the road we didn't come up. We're headed, we've been coming east. Hola! And then this is west, so we're gonna be going up there. And, uh, and then we're gonna be coming back down this road over here. So this is the whole thing is like a figure eight sort of lopsided. It's very uh, interesting and very small, uh, but it's like two little blocks of, of housing connected by an intersection on a corner. And so by doing a figure eight, we kind of get the full walk. So the way that she's walking there, we'll be heading there in just a few minutes. Here, we have a field that comes into the corner. Let's get a view here. This is looking southwest. It's a pretty big open area. It comes right into this tiny village. That is the school bus. Autobus Escolar. And here's the tight little street as we head north again. Got some loud speaking going on, so I have to... Oh! cute little spot here. This is a small church. It is not a Sunday, so I didn't want to talk in front of the church, but there's a little pulperia on the side there, so drinks, snacks, that kind of stuff. That is a very small open-air church, but probably a lot more comfortable than most of the indoor ones, because you get all the fresh air. So this is it. We're all the way at the north of the barrio already. So the last little house, and then you can see, so the houses over there are the ones on that dusty road that I came down. It kind of curves, so it comes closer to this part of town than to the rest. So hopefully you can see that. And then this is a kind of a, a hedgerow here. And there's more farms over there. Beautiful tree there, uh, it's just gorgeous. A little bit of brush. This is the backside of houses. This little village makes me think of like something out of a video game. It's designed so oddly. And now we're like behind everything. And there's a path going forward, or we can take this one to the left, but they're only a few feet apart. Oh no, that one's wired off. This is the way through. Interesting. So here we are on the other road. First, we'll look north into the field. There's the one field over there. And then there's this one with that giant tree. What a gorgeous tree. And then this is the, the main road that goes to the middle of the barrio and runs the, it's the only one that goes the entire distance north-south. So if we head forward, we're heading south and we'll go back to that intersection that we mentioned. Got a little bit nicer of a house on the left. Got another bus here. Thank you. 
the church that we walked by is just on our right. Now there's this little street that is not on the map. We're just going to walk back here just a little bit, but it doesn't go anywhere, I don't think. One of the advantages of having the camera turned around today is you can't tell that I'm getting all sweaty. Normally I don't get too sweaty on these walks today, I really am. Now notice, even way out here, sewer systems from the city. Now I grew up way out in the country, and we definitely didn't have city utilities like that. Okay, so this road is not on the map at all. So Google is not aware of this, and that is a cell phone tower right in the middle here. So, should have no problem getting cell phone service out here. We are heading east. Little path here that goes somewhere. You have to duck underneath the barbed wire. I don't know if you can see the barbed wire, but there's a barbed wire right here. And you'd have to duck under that. These very small homes here. Now I'm going to turn around here in a second and show you it's like real electrical, like metal electric poles out here, which I would not expect. All right, the, the road kind of turns into just a path here, and this is what seems to be the end of the line. Two little houses out here at the end of the path, and then just a field beyond. Quiet, pretty little spot. We'll head back and go back down that main road again. This is such a tiny barrio, but it is a cute little spot. All right, I get a moment of shade at least. Okay, we're back on the main road headed south. While you see vehicles, not a single one has passed us while we were here. Definitely a sleepy place. Okay, we're back at the intersection that we walked through. And I missed this before, that is a community water pump. I don't know how I walked past it and didn't see it. <laughs> I was focused on things beyond it. Just show it to you right here. That is a really modern water pump and clearly not used anymore because it's locked up. So it must be for emergency purposes or something or just legacy. That is way more modern than we had back in New York growing up. We had water pumps when I was a little kid. It's funny, I had not thought of manually running water in a pump like that for decades. I mean, it's easily been 35, 40 years since the last time I pumped water manually like that. But once I saw them here in Nicaragua, and they are used in some places like Carlos Canales, but not here. And uh, once I saw them in use there, all oh, the memories just came flooding back. Oh, here's an old playground that used to be here. Oh, that's, oh, oh okay. So this used to be a school. So that's why it's locked up. That was the water pump for the school. This is a tiny school that's clearly not in use anymore. <laughs> That's the school bus that we saw earlier, heading by. Predictably, the camera shut itself off from the heat, but I had a cold battery in my pocket, so we were able to 
cool down and get moving again pretty quickly. So I wanted to show this. This is the community preschool, and this is preschooler Jenny Peters and Juana Valle from the Comunidad of Monte Oreb, which is where we are. But this is built in July of 2012, so we're just under 12 years old on this preschool, and it's already been abandoned, which is very, very sad. And this, the water pump is for the school. And I really want to show this. This is the playground that was here for the school. And this is really sad that there was once upon a time and not very long ago, a playground here. And clearly it is not here anymore. That is not safe in any way. And it's all, it's all fenced up. You can't get into it. And it's meant to be accessed from the schoolyard. You can tell that someone cut through at some point so that the community could use it. But that is, that is all that's left of that. And that's, that's really sad, especially when you consider it's under 12 years old. That means children who were born while they were building this are still at an age where they might want to use it, and it's been gone clearly for years. And so that's, uh, that's unfortunate. All right, we're going to keep heading south towards the main road. Hola! Almost done. Yeah. And uh, see the rest of the, uh, the community. We have a cute house here on the left and a big open spot here. No idea what this would be for. I mean, it'd be handy. This, maybe this is the community parking lot. Clearly you could put in some cars. I mean, this is the school. So we got a different view of the school here. And uh, you can see these wires were all cut long ago. So maybe the idea was that the school bus would pull in here or teachers would park here or who knows, but that is, that is what remains. It would be interesting to know what economic situation prompted putting a community here that's so isolated, but so dense. That's a cute little place. Right. Oh, we got a nice looking place over here. Look at this. Ooh, the big yard. Nice wall. This is really cute. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Oh yeah, high roof there. This place is still going over here. Hola. They really have a cute setup. There's a nice house, really nice yard. And then fields behind, you can see paths going back, fields back there. And we have another pulperia here. Or, yeah. And they sell clothing. And then we got a little houses again. Another dog in the shadows. Are you staying cool? You definitely don't have to worry about dogs on a hot day like this. They're just happy to sleep. All right. And we are back at the path to the water treatment plant that we got detoured by at the beginning. So that's where we are. That is the entirety, every street, every side street, every loop, every house of Monte Oreb, plus its water treatment facility across the street, plus the street leading up to it from Sutiava. So you now have a really good idea of what this area is like. There's some people walking down from Sutiava proper. We'll give you another look again at Monte Oreb. You can see that beautiful wall down there where those people are walking. That dog got up because there's some water. And then the other street, that guy is just past the street that we walked up initially. So it's just absolutely tiny, but that is what a small country barrio 
or community. It's not actually a barrio. It's actually part of Sutiava. So it's part of the administration of Sutiava, uh, but it is a community of Monte Oreb. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Help support coming out and doing projects like this, exploring, showing more of Nicaragua, helping you guys understand what it's like out here, getting to know the area, seeing what the opportunities are, all that kind of stuff. I love coming out and doing these walks, even on hot days like this. I don't want to put myself on camera again because I'm sweating heavily, but it is truly hot and it is the middle of the day with the sun coming down. I'm going to head back to that really nice pulperia and get myself a Gatorade or something similar. We don't actually use Gatorade here. We use Electrolit or there's a new one. I don't know its name, but we're going to do a short on it of uh, they now have a Gatorade equivalent made in Nicaragua because normally we used to get them in from Mexico. We now get them here. So no more Electrolit from, from Mexico. Now it's all about the local stuff. I'll show that on the show coming up really soon. And as always, tell your friends about the show, share on social media. Adio. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And now, popped up on the screen for your viewing pleasure are four additional episodes. Just pick one at random or one that looks interesting to you and give it a view. Every little view helps make the show more popular on YouTube. Thanks.